نحمده ونصلي على رسول النبي الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إحدنا السراط المستقيم سراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الدالين آمين قال الله تعالى في شان حبيبي إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا سلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا ولانا محمد طب القلوب ودوائها وعافية الأبدان وشفائها ونور الأبصار وديائها وعلى آله وصحبه دائما أبدا سلاة وسلاما عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن شاء الله we'll continue with the the talk on Musa alayhi salam and last uh, last time we were talking about how they gathered all these magicians and as I said you know according to some narrations 400 magicians you know, who were the experts in their fields I mean the best magicians of the land were brought before Musa alayhi salam to challenge him you know against his or what they accused him of magic and so, as we said last time, you know, Musa al-Islam, they asked Musa al-Islam, does he want to throw for, go first or should they go first? And he said for them to go first. And when they threw this and all of these ropes and rods that they threw became serpents and slithering around, uh, and all of the people are seeing this, Musa al-Islam, of course, became somewhat afraid not for his own safety or for anybody's physical safety, but because he was afraid that perhaps this would mislead the people when they would see this and they would become uh, enticed by it, thinking that, oh, this is some type of real power, uh, and become misled. And so he was afraid for, for their guide, misguidance. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, do not fear, but for him to throw his staff. And when he threw the staff, of course, it became the serpent, which devoured all of their magic and exposed it. And didn't ex not only expose it to everybody watching, but it also exposed it to the magicians themselves. And they immediately fell into prostration, saying that we believe in the Lord of Harun and Musa. And we talked about how Pharaoh threatened them and he actually uh, fulfilled his threats to them and he crucified them. Uh, and of course they died on belief uh, and so you know, they are the dwellers of paradise. Here the important point that, that I was bringing up was that you know, these are 400 magicians, the best in, their, in the land you know, who know the workings in and out of magic and yet they were unable to affect Musa al-Islam at all and so part of magic you know the way magic affects people is that there is some weakness within them you know, because this is an action done through shaitan and so there's some door that shaitan can get through and to affect the person and some type of weakness you know some uncleanliness or or instability or something that allows shaitan to get in and affect the person and then you know that that magic comes out in various forms you know, whether physical ailments or uh, mental ailments or other ailments you know so this is a reality Yet all of these magicians had absolutely no effect on Musa al -Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent the prophets not to be affected by their environment, but to affect their environment. If you, you know, Rasulullah Sallallahu said that, you know, company has an effect, which is why we should keep good company. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, 
you know, he says, uh, you know, to keep the company of the truthful, because if you keep the company of bad people, then it affects you. Again, the prophets did not come to be, be affected. They came to cause an effect. Uh, simple example of this is the story of Rasulullah where he's, you know, every day he goes by and the old woman throws trash in his way. You know, which is very interesting if you, if you look at this. Every day Rasulullah goes by there. Every day she does the same thing. You know, it's like clockwork. clockwork. Rasulullah Sallam continues his path. She initially continues her actions. So Rasulullah Sallam doesn't change his way. He's not affected by what's going on. He's not changing his way. The old woman falls sick. Rasulullah Sallam goes to meet her, you know, to check on her, to make sure that she's okay. And what does she do? She accepts Islam. So now she has changed. Rasulullah didn't change, he changed her. So she changed. So, same way, you know, with the issue of magic. Again, the prophets, they have, you know, and especially when we're talking about Rasulullah You know, as Hassan bin Thabit radiallahu said, خَلَقْتُ مُبَرَّمْ مِنْ كُلِّ عَيْبٍ That you are created without any fault, without any shortcomings. So there's no way for magic to affect him. There's no way for anything to affect him. Yeah. Uh, the only effect that, that is upon him is the effect of his Lord. And so, when people say that, oh, you know, this Jewish woman, she did magic on Rasulullah and he was affected by it. Uh, if you look at the narrations, you know, they say that he became anxious. But they don't say why he became anxious. Uh, which is an interesting point because Allah SWT in the Quran tells us why Rasulullah would be anxious. You know, in the last verses of Surah Tawbah, you know, لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِّنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا عَنِتْتُمْ Harisun alaykum bil mu'mineen. Harisun alaykum. That he is anxious over you. Yeah. Like a mother is anxious over her children that no harm should come to them. Rasulullah is anxious over his ummah that no harm should come to them. So when this Jewish woman tried to do magic on Rasulullah he was anxious over the ummah because it could not affect him but what about his ummah? Where there are those who have these weaknesses where they, this could get through and affect them. And so this is the anxiety of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, some other people, they try to say, oh, you know, it affected him, so he, be, he started to forget. I mean, if a prophet starts to forget, then what is left? And Allah SWT in the Quran, what does he say? He says, سَنُقْرِيُكَ فَلَا تَنْسَى Illa Allah, that he does not forget except by the will of Allah hmm? uh, and, and the more proper translation would be he does not omit anything except what Allah wills yeah. so you know if the magicians could not affect Musa a.s then how could the magic of a, of, of a woman, of a single woman, affect this, the leader and master of Musa salam, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yes, she tried, and Rasulullah sallam became anxious over his ummah, because if something were to happen to them, if people did this to them, what would happen to them? And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed Surah Falaq and Surah Nas as a protection Islam in itself is a protection. And again, where Rasulullah said that this jail is, or this world is a jail for the believer, so long as he stays within the confines of, of Islam, then he is under protective custody. When he ventures out, then issues start.
And this is something that, that we will come back to when we talk about Suleiman al-Islam, because that this, will, this will come back at that point, you know, as far as the magic issue. Uh, and then we'll start to understand why it became so prevalent among the children of Israel. Another interesting point here, though, is if you remember when Musa al-Islam is telling Fir'aun about his Lord, and he says, "Rabbu samawati wal ard, wa ma You know, my Lord is is uh, is the Lord. He is the Lord of the heavens and the earth and whatever is in between. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentions in Surah Qasa, Surah number twenty-eight, verse number thirty-eight, where Fir'aun uh, sanctions Haman to build a tower, a massive tower, because he wants to go up and look at this Lord of Musa, alayhi salam. You know, it just shows you that you know when when your vo when your heart is void of guidance, then you know stupidity has no end. Uh, so, so you know, it's, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentions this there. After this challenge, of course, Fir'aun still stuck on his dis disbelief, and Fir'aun's ministers and all of these people they're also still stuck on disbelief you know even after seeing you know the clear signs they're still unwilling to accept so now you know again for years nothing had happened to Firaun and nothing had happened to Firaun's people now troubles come why because he had insulted Because he had insulted Musa alayhi salam. And so we get this, you know, plague upon plague. You know, when Pharaoh insulted Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Allah, doesn't matter. But when he f insulted the friend of Allah, who is a prophet, you know, this is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is at war with two kinds of people. In the Quran, we find that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is at war. Allah and His Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, are at war with with those who deal in a riba, in usury, in interest. He is also at war with those who have animosity against his friends, and we know this through the Hadith of Rasulullah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is at war with them. You know, and of course, prophets, you know, are friends of Allah as well. Of course, that level of prophets is much higher. Wilaya is something that you can strive for, or the friendship of Allah is something you can strive for and attain. Prophethood is not something you can strive for and attain. This is the gift of Allah, period. You know. But the, every prophet is also a friend of Allah. You know, and so when Fir'aun is now showing this outward animosity against the, his friend, Allah's friend, who is a prophet, now the problems come. You know. And so again, if this is the situation of Kalimullah, the one who spoke to Allah, what about those who have issues with Rasulullah Sallallahu himself, the master of all of these prophets, who is Habibullah, he is the beloved of Allah. If we look at the plagues, there were five that came. Yeah. First was flooding. You know, so much flooding that it just ruined everything. The crops and everything became destroyed. Next was locust came and devoured everything. You know, and these plagues would each would last for quite a while before finally the people would realize what they needed to do to get some relief. Third was lice, you know, affecting the people of Firaun. And these plagues would, would, you know, like the flooding, yeah, it affected everybody, but more so the people of Firaun. You know, the locust, again, it affected everybody, but more so the people of Firaun. The lice, only the people of Firaun, you know, only Firaun and his people were affected by this. Toads, you know, 
toads everywhere. They're drinking water, everything that they, the bathing water, everything you find toads everywhere. You know, just, uh, and then the last was blood. You know, so much so, the blood was such that whenever the people of Firaun uh, and Firaun and his people would want to drink something, it would become blood. So if they're trying to drink water, it becomes blood. If they're trying to drink, you know, their liquors, it becomes blood. Everything they try to drink becomes blood. To the extent that they would go to the children of Israel and give them water and ask them to put it in their mouth and then spit it into theirs. But as soon as they would spit it into the mouth of the Egyptians, it would be blood. And after they would last for a while, then the people would realize, oh, you know, how do we get rid of this? And they would go to Musa alayhi salam. Firaun and his people would go to Musa alayhi salam in verse one, 134 of Surah Araf, Surah number 7, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about this. And it's very important to understand. You know, they would go to him and they would say, Ya Musa, ud'ulana rabbaka bima ahida indak. That, O Musa, al-Islam, invoke your Lord, you know, by the covenant that he has taken from you. You know, ahad, indak, by this covenant that your Lord has taken with, from you. And I'm going to come back to this point. Because it's, it's important to understand what the covenant is. You know. And then they would say, لَإِنْ كَشَفْتَ عَنَّا الرِّجْثَ لَنُؤْمِنَنَّ لَكَ وَلَنُرْسِلَنَّ مَعَاكَ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ And if you remove this plague from us, you know, if you, Musa al-Islam, remove this plague from us, then we will believe in you. You know, for your sake we will believe in you and for your sake we will free the children of Israel. Yeah. If we look at the first part of this, you know, and, and one, I'm going to say this in the beginning, I'm going to say this again later, is if we, you know, is that even the children of, of or even the people of Firaun, you know, including Firaun, his advisors, Haman, Qarun, all of his people, they knew when trouble comes, where do you go in order to get relief? Where did they go? They went to the messenger. Mm -hmm. And they asked him to invoke his Lord by the covenant that his Lord had taken from him. So my question now is, what is the covenant that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took from Musa alayhi salam? You know, and to understand this, we go to Surah, Surah Ali Imran, and we've talked about this before, and I'm going to talk about this again. Surah Ali Imran, verse, uh, Surah number 3, verse 81. And what is the covenant that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took from the prophets? وَإِذْ أَخَذَ اللَّهُ مِيثَاقَ النَّبِيِّينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressing His beloved, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And remember, وَإِذْ أَخَذَ اللَّهُ مِيثَاقَ النَّبِيِّينَ You know, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took the covenant from the prophets. What was the covenant? That we give you the book and the wisdom. And then comes to you this Rasul who testifies what is with you. Do you believe in him and render him help? So the covenant is about who? The covenant is about Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The covenant that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala took from the Prophets is solely about Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that they will follow him and, and, and help him. And so even the people of Firaun understood this point. So when they came to Musa al-Islam, what would they say? They say, by the covenant that you have taken from your Lord. Ahada hmm? indak. You know, this covenant you took from your Lord, by that, invoke your Lord because of that. Literally, you know, if you, if you take this, these verses together, what does it mean? It means, you know, by the, by, you know, we invoke you 
or we ask you to invoke your Lord by Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because he is the covenant that was taken so we ask you to remove this from us you know this plague from us and if you do this then we will you know, believe in you and we will you know and for your sake we will free the children of Israel And then the next verse, verse Allah says, and when, when this would be done, you know, when, when Allah SWT would remove the, this uh, plague from them, they would go back on their word. You know, five times they did this. Every time they went back on their word. The, and here it's important also to understand, Allah SWT does not say that they did anything wrong when they did this because of their doing this the plague was removed which means that this is what they should have done but they of course went back on their word so they should have, should have kept their word but in order to remove the plague this is what they had to do when Fir'aun and his people they knew what to do to get rid of the plague you know it's a tragedy you know, and a shame that we, being the followers of Rasulullah today, don't know what to do to get rid of this plague. The only way to get to this, or get rid of this, is to, to, is to do thoba. The only way to get rid of any difficulty that comes is to, to, is to do thoba, is to go back to Allah, but the only way back to Allah is through Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, that we beseech Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala through the love that He has for His Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that is the only way that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will respond to us. So, you know, it's, again, it's a sad condition that we are in. That we don't even understand the basic or have the basic understanding of Fir'aun and his people. Yeah. Uh, we think that Rasulullah came to give us a message, he's given us the message and he has nothing to do with us anymore. You know, that's it. Astaghfirullah. You know. When he himself in reality is the message. Yeah. So Many things happen in between, and we're going to start on that uh, next time, inshallah. Uh, I'm going to end here today, inshallah. But, you know, may Allah allow us to understand this uh, and allow us to go back to Him the way He loves to see us come back to Him, uh, which is through His Rasul, through His Habib, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina wa ala Muhammadin wa ala salli ala Sayyidina wa ala Muhammadin barak sallam sallam alayhi. Ya Allah, guide us to the straight path and fill our hearts with your love and the love of your beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family, his companions and all of those whom you love. And allow us to, to return and make thawbah to you in a manner which is pleasing to you and in a manner which you will accept it from us, which is through your Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, and uh, uh, remove these difficulties from us uh, and uh, allow us to worship you the way you should be worshipped and allow us to honor and respect your Habib وسلم, the way he should be honored and respected.